Look at traffic there. Someone is reaving a truck. That sounds like an F-150. Right now I'm filming with the iPhone 12 Pro and I'm using the Black Magic camera app. Recently, there are new updates on the Blackmagic camera app that I want to share with you guys. There are a few things that Blackmagic design has added to the Blackmagic camera app for those that shoot videos using their smartphones. Like if you use an iPhone 12 Pro, like the one I'm using. There is a lot to talk about, but I want to make this video very short and I want to talk about, I think maybe four or five updates that I really find very helpful and useful in this new 2.1 version of the Blackmagic camera app. Now, off-speed recording simply allows you to shoot at higher frames or you can shoot at extremely lower frames without necessarily changing your frames per second or your FPS in which you're shooting your entire video. If you want to shoot using off-speed, all you have to do is to tap on the frames per second there, your frame rates. Any of you guys are able to see that. So you tap on your frame rate button right there. And then on this side of the screen, you'll see that there is an off-speed icon that pops up there. So in order for you to shoot off speed, you simply tap off speed, click on there and when it turns blue like that, it means now off speed is on and I can adjust the speed, okay? So let's say for example, I want to shoot at slow motion, uh, 60 frames per second. So right there, as you can see, my off speed is at 60 frames per second. When you look at that, that is what I have right now. So if I attempted to shoot a video right now, what that's doing right now is shooting a video at 60 frames per second without necessarily changing my playback frame rate. So in other words, if I get into post-production and I have a 30 frames per second timeline, and then I drop this clip that is 60 frames per second this clip is going to play back at slow motion because I captured it at an off speed of 60 frames per second but with the intention of playing it back on a timeline of 30 frames per second. So that is going to play back in slow motion. That is what off speed does. And one more interesting thing that Blackmagic Design added to the off speed function before you would record off speed without sound but now with this new update, you can actually record off-speed with sound. You guys remember when I talked about the Pro Movie Camera app in one of my recent videos where I was simply talking about the Blackmagic Camera app and its inability to allow us to kind of get into the folders and transfer videos that we need without necessarily transferring an entire folder. By the way, I have a tip on that, so stick around. Now, Blackmagic has introduced bitrate on their app, but it's only supported for H.265 and H.264, which I kind of find very cool and very interesting. You might be wondering and saying, oh yeah, do I really need bitrates? I mean, you need it. For example, if you're just shooting on an iPhone 12 Pro like I do, where I do not have the option for shooting Apple Pro Res and Log, I simply just shoot in H.265 most of the time. So bitrate is something that I really find very important and by default after I updated the app bitrate was set to high so there is maximum and then there is high medium and low so for better quality you would go with maximum but of course that has a drawback it's going to generate very large video files and you don't want that I did a video comparison where I shot short clips using maximum and high using H.265 and H.264 but the difference is really very small so if you want to access the bitrate you simply come to record and go to codec under codec you're going to see H.265 and H.264 and right there there is a new menu that was added bitrate it reads bitrate and you have your max your high your medium and your low right now I've set it to high 
and that means that I am recording at 12 megabytes per second. Now let's see if we short using a maximum bit rate, will you even be able to see the difference? The video before was shot using H.265 but the bit rate was on high. Now this is the bit rate at maximum. I don't know if you guys are able to see any differences in quality. I believe that the files are going to be a little bit bigger in this instance because bitrate is simply a measure of how much video data is recorded per second on your camera's sensor. Higher bitrate, you're recording more data. That does not necessarily translate into better video quality. It has a lot of factors that are involved. For example, you have the aspect of resolution, the quality of the lens or the lens choice that you've chosen to shoot with. For example, if I decided right now to shoot using the very wide lens on the iPhone 12, of course, we all know that the wider lens on the iPhone is 12 megapixels, right? Yeah, I think it's 12 megapixels on the iPhone 12. Of course, on the 16, they bumped it up to, uh, I think, 48. But uh, more megapixels does not necessarily translate into a better quality image. So right now, I'm going to switch to the wide camera and I'm going to set my bitrate to high for you guys to see if there's any change in video quality. Right now, I am shooting at 13 millimeters. And of course, that is a 12 megapixel camera on the iPhone 12 Pro. Do you guys see any difference? I should have actually not paused the video because another update that Blackmagic Design added to the Blackmagic camera app is the ability to actually shoot using different cameras. You can simply just switch between the first camera, the third and the second without necessarily having to pause your video, which is actually a very cool thing to do. But one drawback was whenever I switched Let's say I started shooting using the front-facing camera and then switched to the back-facing camera. Most times, hello? Most times, I would get footage that is other way around, like the orientation would actually change. If you shot a video with the previous version of the app and switched around the cameras, you would end up having an upside-down footage, especially when you switch either from the front to the back or back to the front. So that footage that you should that you switch to is usually upside down but now with a new update Blackmagic says that you can switch between the different cameras without necessarily having a flipped video orientation and I find that actually very cool let's try that out right now I'm shooting using the wide angle lens of the Blackmagic camera app and I am going to just switch that up for you guys to see and let's one two three go switch to the the 26 millimeter that is what the 26 millimeter actually looks like when you switch uh, from the wide which is the 13 mil to the 26 mil so right now i will sh i will switch it up to the macro which is the 52 mil and this is what you have so when you switch it up to the 52 mil that is what you have remember my bit rate is on high so right now I am going to sh I'm going to switch it to the front facing camera and this is where the problems have always been. So let's switch to the front facing camera. Ready? There we go. Now I have switched it to the front facing camera and in the previous version I must tell you that the footage during capture would actually look right side up but when you went back to review the video footage in your media folder you would realize that part of the video where you switch to the front facing camera would be upside down <laughs> which I kind of found very disturbing but thanks to Blackmagic Design that they have managed to fix that but there is a little issue with this switching there is a little kind of uh, like there's a way the cameras behave when you switch for example if I switch to the main camera the 26 mil you guys see that is like a microsecond of darkness. Um, it's kind of a flicker kind of thing that pops up whenever you're switching the camera. I don't know if there is a better way of addressing that Blackmagic design, but I find that a little bit annoying because you should have expected it to really be a very smooth transition. Again, it could be a little bit different for people that use the more 
advanced iPhone cameras. <laughs> like the iPhone 16, as they say, that it's the most powerful and most advanced camera ever made by Apple. This is what they tell us every time they're releasing a new phone. <laughs> but I don't know if that is true. Look at those geese. Goose, geese? So the other update that Blackmagic is telling us about is the display when shooting time-lapse videos. Now, they want, this one is not really a, a deal breaker. It's, it's not a banger for me. It's just a display. It's not really that powerful as a function to really have in the Blackmagic camera. But you know what? It's cool to have it there, but I really don't find it very useful. And then the other update is all about you know stability when shooting 4k uh, video that is standard then there are other unique updates that i actually do not know what they stand for like this one here i don't know what that is i think it's something to do with the dock kit whatever i don't know what that is and then they talk about improved performance when uh, monitoring on hdmi output i don't know that because i personally don't use my iphone Kind of connect it with an hdmi output for monitoring most times i'm just shooting video out of my iphone holding it out just like this on a gimbal or a tripod or just handheld and just directly speak to the camera i don't find that very useful in my case however for people that are into like real big productions <laughs> using a phone <laughs> yeah i think that is very useful but not in my case and i think it's also not the case for regular iphone shooters or people that generally do mobile filmmaking or simply just use your smartphone to shoot videos so i don't find that very useful oh one more update <laughs> a very important one i had forgotten about it and the reason why i had even forgotten about this update is very simple i still use my iphone 12 pro i do not have that camera control button they talk about in fact most people wrote off that button said it was useless but it looks like blackmagic has found a use for it so blackmagic says in the new version 2.1 that now you can launch the Blackmagic camera app using the camera control button. <laughs> oh man. I, I just have a feeling that iPhone 12 Pro can do as much as the iPhone 16s. Because what they are simply adding to these new phones is just software. Maybe the only thing I, I might feel like I'm really missing out could be uh, ability to shoot in log but again <laughs> not everyone wants to shoot log when using a smartphone especially if you intend to shoot a little bit longer videos shooting in log comes with a drawback of very large files so yeah <laughs> i wouldn't actually shoot in log if i'm just shooting a regular video but if i'm shooting something that is like let's say a commercial but they want it on, on an iphone then i could find log useful but for regular YouTube videos like this one, you don't need log. I say it again, you don't need log. Just expose your scene very well. Just make sure you have optimal light. Not like me right now with the sun way too gone. It's pretty, a little bit dark right now. And I don't know if you guys are able to see me. And of course, right now I am walking with my back against the light. The light is that way and I am headed this way. I'm headed that way so yeah I believe if you're able to light your scene very well I think you don't need log <laughs> I can guarantee this one if you gave somebody a regular person on the internet you gave them a video that was shot at H.264, H.265 and somebody well exposed that footage and graded it very well and you also gave them another same footage but captured using log the difference would be very small of course it's also down to the compression that comes with all these algorithms on social media YouTube, uh, Facebook, TikTok that really compress these video files and squeeze the quality out of them so you really don't get to see the quality <laughs> in the video footage. Right now I'm walking backwards because <laughs> I told you the sun is way too gone. What do you guys think about these updates? What update do you find very useful and 
banger on the Black Magic Camera app version 2.1. Let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.